left, now throws it right. Intercepted by Jermaine Johnson at the five. He's off for the races. Jermaine can take it all the way. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Bush. Welcome to a look back at one of the finest seasons in NSU Demon football history. The 1998 Demons will be remembered as one of the best teams ever to take the field here in Natchitoches. After all, the team was coming off a pretty successful 97 season, having won a share of the Southland Conference and making an appearance in the 1AA playoffs. That taste for success made the 98 Demons even hungrier for more success. Their quest to become the best began with two-a-day workouts in the sweltering August heat. Two stories emerged in the preseason that would impact the team. The return of two players and the departure of another. Preseason All-American defensive end Robert Daniel was back in camp after missing the entire 97 season. Daniel's right knee was ready for action. And running back Brian Jaquette would be back for a sixth year in Demon Land after missing last season with a broken leg suffered in the season opener. With Daniel and Jaquette back in the mix, the Demons were assured of having strong leadership. Meantime, the battle for the starting quarterback was heating up. Brad Spangler, Bo Meeks, Warren Patterson, and transfer Cody Smith entered the race neck and neck. After the final scrimmage, Sam Goodwin decided to go with Smith. But the former high school All-American would never take a snap as a demon. A rare stomach disorder forced Smith to call it quits. He'd end up leaving the school, but not before making an impact on his teammates. The demons dedicate the year to Smith and wear decals on their helmets to remember a brave competitor. So with Smith out of action, NSU head coach Sam Goodwin named Brad Spangler the starter for the season opener against Southern. A record crowd of over 16,000 was on hand in Turpin Stadium as the Demons kicked it off against the 12th ranked Jaguars. On the fourth play of the game, Demon cornerback Jermaine Jones would set the tempo for what would be a big play season for the Demons. Intercepted by Jermaine Jones at the five. He's off to the races. Jermaine can take it all the way. He's at the 40. He's at midfield. He has Jacoby to beat. He fakes him. Jacoby tricks him. Jermaine stays on his feet at the 20. The 10. Touchdown, Jermaine Jones. The Demon defense continues to shine in the second quarter as Mario Sanchez busts in for the first of the Demon's five sacks on the day. The Demons held on to a slim 7-0 lead at the half, but the Demon defense continues their intensity in the second half. Ladan Thomas, one of his two sacks on the day, and then the Demon offense answers, handoff to Brian Jaquette in for the touchdown, NSU up 14-0. In the fourth quarter, Warren Patterson had taken over at quarterback. He hits Nathan Black for a 27-yard touchdown, and the Demons were on top 21-7. Meantime, the Purple Swarm continues to swarm Alja Delaney in for the sack. The Demons hold the Jaguars to a school record minus 31 yards rushing. Late in the game, Ronnie Powell reels off what would be his longest rush of the season, a 75-yarder. He finishes with 143 yards rushing on the day, and the Demons win it over the Jaguars, 28-7. to Following the game, Jermaine Jones is named the Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Week. For week two of the season, the Demons headed south to Lafayette to take on Division 1A opponent USL. The Raging Cajuns and Demons slugged it out for the full 60 minutes in a game that was decided in the final seconds. With the Demons trailing 7-0 in the second quarter, the Demon defense comes up big again. Jermaine Jones picks off the pass and returns it 75 yards for the touchdown. The Demons were on the board, leading it 7-6. The Demon defense holds again. USL has to punt it away. Charvis Richmond blocks it for NSU. The Demons recover in great field position. But they can't punch it in for a touchdown. Instead, Thomas Latouf comes on and kicks the 21-yard field goal. The Demons let it 10-6 at the half. In the second half, more Demon defense. Alja Delaney comes in for the tackle behind the line. He had 13 hits on the game, three for lost yardage. Still in the third quarter, Warren Patterson hits T.J. Sutherland. 
who makes a quick move to the sidelines. He goes 48 yards for a first down, setting up the Demons' next score. Thomas Latouf hits a 24-yard field goal to tie the game up at 13. USL would take the lead on a safety, but the Demons come right back. The handoff to Ronnie Powell on the reverse, and he takes it downfield 23 yards in for the touchdown, and the Demons were back on top 21 to 15. With three and a half minutes left in the game, the Raging Cajuns put on the board what could be the decisive blow. Brandon Stokely, a 77-yard touchdown pass, and the Demons were trailing by one. But the Demons weren't through yet. Warren Patterson will hit Nathan Black for a first down, NSU driving down the field. Patterson then hits Chris Pritchett, who makes a great catch for a first down. The chains continue to move. With five seconds remaining in the game, Thomas Latouf comes on and kicks a 24-yard field goal, and that is the game winner. The Demons win it over the Raging Cajuns, 24-22. <laughs> For the second week in a row, Jermaine Jones is named the Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Week. Thomas Latouf picks up special team honors for his last second field goal. Week three of the season saw the Demons return home to the turf in Turpin to take on Division II Henderson State, which also happens to be the alma mater of NSU head coach Sam Goodwin. Before the game, Goodwin receives a plaque for being named to the Ready Hall of Honor. and The Demon players come out of the locker room to congratulate their coach. And then it was down to the business of beating their head coach's alma mater. He's back. Wants the home run ball. Intended down low. Caught at the 10-yard line. Touchdown. Northwestern State. T.J. Sutherland. The Demons will put three touchdowns on the board in the first quarter. Ronnie Powell from 12 yards out. The Demon defense comes up with four turnovers on the day. Matt Slate picks the fumble out of the air and returns it. NSU was back in business. Jaquette is the tailback. They fake to Chinook. Patterson will throw to the end zone. He's got a man out there. Touchdown! Eric Ranger! In the second quarter, the Demons don't let up. Warren Patterson hits Nathan Black, his third touchdown pass of the game. Patterson finishes with four touchdowns, 274 yards passing. After another Henderson State fumble, the Demons turn it into points. Ronnie Powell from 14 yards out for the touchdown. Powell rushed for 116 yards on the day. Still in the second quarter, more NSU offense. Warren Patterson to Chris Pritchett in the end zone for the score. The Demons' route was on. Just before the half, the Demons strike again. The handoff to Brian Jaquette in for the touchdown. NSU led it 46 to nothing at the half. In the second half, plenty of Demons get in on the action. Tony Taylor scores his first touchdown at NSU as the Demons win it 53 to seven over Henderson State. NSU moves to a perfect 3-0. For the fourth week of the season, it was back on the road again, this time to San Marcos, Texas for the conference opener. The eighth-ranked Demons taking on Southwest Texas with head coach Sam Goodwin looking for his 100th college career win. For the second week in a row, the Demons score on their first possession. Warren Patterson up top to T.J. Sutherland, six yards for the touchdown. Demons on top, 7-0. Warren Patterson's pass complete to T.J. Sutherland. And while the offense was clicking, the defense was on as well. Robert Daniel with the sack. On the very next play, it's Jake Michelle with one of his two sacks. He had 11 tackles on the day. The Demons with 10 sacks in the ball game. Again, win. Hit in the backfield by number 84, Jake Michelle. Meantime, it was bombs away for the offense. Patterson to Eric Granger, 46 yards for the touchdown. And of course, it wouldn't be an NSU game if Jermaine Jones didn't come up big. He picks up the fumbled snap and returns it 74 yards. He'll go all the way for the touchdown to put the Demons on top, 21 to nothing.
Just before the half, the Demons strike again. Warren Patterson to pass. He hits Ronnie Powell, 38 yards for the touchdown. The Demons on top, 28-3 at the half. In the third quarter, the Demons put it out of reach when Ronnie Powell goes in from a yard out to put NSU on top 34-3. The Demons go on to win it 34-10. And in the process, hand head coach Sam Goodwin his 100th college career victory. following week, the Demons had a tall task ahead of them. It was off to Columbia, Missouri to take on the Division 1A National Power Missouri Tigers. The Tigers entered the game with the number one rated rushing attack in the nation, but the Purple Swarm would turn some heads early in this one. The Demons had two former NSU greats on the sidelines rooting them on. NFL Hall of Famer Jackie Smith made the trip over from St. Louis and former Demon All-American and Kansas City Chief Offensive Lineman Marcus Spears on hand as well. The Tigers learn early that it won't be easy rushing on the Demons. Ladan Thomas and Jake Michelle plugging up the middle. And when the Tigers go through the air, Michael Green is there for Northwestern to halt the Tigers' first drive. Throughout the first quarter, the Demon defense is relentless. Jason Miller with the stop. And then Missouri quarterback Corby Jones in trouble as Matt Slate and Jake Michelle apply the pressure. The Demons hold Missouri to minus six yards rushing in the first quarter. The Demon offense begins to warm up in the first quarter. Warren Patterson hits Eric Granger for a first down and more, but the Demons would miss a field goal and they were scoreless after one quarter of play. Missouri finally breaks the scoring drought when Devin West takes it in from 17 yards out. The Tigers get two touchdowns in the second quarter and lead it 14-0 at the half. In the third quarter, the Demons close the gap when Thomas Latouf connects on a 32-yard field goal. Demons trailing by 11. After another Tiger touchdown, the Demons go to the air. Warren Patterson to T.J. Sutherland. The long gain sets up the Demons' next score. Thomas Latouf connects on a 30-yard field goal. The Demons trailing 21-6. In the fourth quarter, Warren Patterson to pass. He goes for it all and hits Chris Pritchett for a 27-yard touchdown. The Demons were trailing 28-13. Touchdown, Northwestern State. On the extra point attempt, Sean Grigsby takes it himself in for the two-pointer. And the Demons were trailing 28-14. The Demons can get no closer, though, and they lose to Missouri 35-14, but they leave Columbia knowing they played a Division 1A top 25 opponent pretty tough. For his 18 tackles and one interception, Demon safety Mike Green is named the Louisiana and Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Week. After an open date, the Demons return home for a big Southland Conference game against top-ranked McNeese. A crowd of over 14,000 was on hand for the big Thursday night showdown. A regional TV audience tuned in as the Demon fans ripped down the goalposts. Once again, the Demons get off to a great start. NSU marches it down the field and caps off their first scoring drive when Ronnie Powell takes it in from five yards out. The Demons were on top 7-0. Later in the first quarter, the Cowboys were marching it downfield when Blake Prejean goes to the end zone. It's picked off a one-handed interception by the Demons' Kenny Wright. The Cowboys continue to turn the ball over in the second quarter. It's a fumble recovered by NSU's Mike Green. Just before the half, the Cowboys muster a field goal. Sean's LaFriends from 29 yards, but the Demons let it 7-3 at the half. In the second half, the Demon defense comes up with more turnovers. Mike Stone on the interception. The Demons will pick off four Cowboy passes on the day. After a Cowboys touchdown, the Demons trailing 10-7 when Jermaine Jones comes up with the interception. Early in the fourth quarter, the Demons still trailing. Third and 11 from the 16-yard line. And the handoff will go to the freshman, Tony Taylor. Taylor picks up 13 yards, enough for the first down, and the drive continues. 
Two plays later, Warren Patterson calls his own number. He is in for the touchdown, and the Demons were back on top, leading 14 to 10, with less than 10 minutes left to play. With 10 seconds left in the ball game, the Cowboys have one more chance. Blake Prejean to throw, but he's picked off by Jermaine Jones, his second interception of the game. And the Demons win it over the top-ranked Cowboys, 14 to 10, and pandemonium breaks out in Turpin Stadium. <laughs> Demon cornerback Jermaine Jones is named the Louisiana, the Southland Football League, and the National Defensive Player of the Week for his play against the top-ranked Cowboys. After the big win over McNeese, the Demons moved up to number four in the Division I AA poll. NSU head coach Sam Goodwood worried about a possible letdown, led his team down to Thibodeau to take on the Nickel State Colonels in what would be an all-out war. Once again, the Demons score on their first possession of the ball game. Ronnie Powell on the reverse, taking the pitch but he sprains his ankle on the play. He would not return to full strength till the playoffs. Tony Taylor and Brian Jaquette would take over the rushing duties and Jaquette gets into the end zone from four yards out. The Demons up seven nothing. The Demons hold the Colonels to two field goals and lead it seven six in the third quarter when Tony Taylor puts in a memorable performance. Tony Taylor, he's hit, bounces to the left side, slithers past one, gets by another one, stays on his feet remarkably, breaks another tackle at the 30, stumbles to the 25. That was a heck of a run by Tony Taylor, perhaps the best you'll ever see for 15 yards. Taylor eludes seven would-be tacklers on the play, and the run is voted best run in college football that week by the Compact College Football Plays of the Week. Four plays later, the Demons get more when Brian Jaquette is in from a yard out, NSU on top 14 to six. The Colonels had scored a touchdown to cut the Demons lead to two when Warren Patterson hits Chris Pritchett across the middle and Pritchett is gone, 77 yards for the touchdown and the Demons took a 21 to 12 lead. Nichols quarterback Brad Zeller has proves to be elusive all night long, but Mario Sanchez picks up one of his two sacks on the night. After a Colonel's touchdown, the Demons holding on to a two-point lead, facing a punting situation. Sean Grigsby on the fake to Brian Jaquette, and Jaquette lumbers for a critical first down, and the drive remains alive. But the Demons turn the ball over on downs and Nichols marches the length of the field attempting a field goal to take the lead, but it's no good. With three and a half minutes remaining in the game, Warren Patterson goes up top to Eric Granger who hauls it in for the touchdown and it looked to be the decisive blow. But the pesky Colonels won't go away. They march right down the field. Brad Zellers with a two yard touchdown to cut the Demons lead 28 to 26. The game isn't secure until David Jones comes up with a big play. Approaching, here's the end over end kick. It is grabbed by the Demons at the 40. He works to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 22 yard line. David Jones. Jones fielding the onside kick ends the Colonel's threat, and the Demons escape from Thibodeau with a 28 to 26 win. For the eighth game of the season, it was homecoming here in Natchitoches. The Demons hosting Troy State, and the Trojans came to town with revenge on their minds. Once again, the Demons get off to a hot start. Jockett is the fullback. Here's the option to Taylor. He's got running room. Gets a block from Jockett at the 30. He may score. 20, 10, to the sideline, five on. Touchdown, Tony Taylor. Touchdown, Northwestern State. After a Troy State touchdown, the Demon defense comes up with more opportunities as Robert Daniel recovers the fumble. But the offense doesn't move the ball very far, and Thomas Latouf comes on to attempt a 31-yard field goal. It's good, and the Demons were up 10-7. 10. 
In the second quarter, Wayne Thomas takes it in for Troy State from six yards out, and the Demons trailed it at the half, 14 to 10. The defense sets the tone for the second half, and the Demons were more than up to the task. And when the Trojans tried to get three, the Demons were there as well. Mike Green with the block, Matt Slate the recovery on the field goal attempt. The Demon offense had 12 plays inside the Trojan 20-yard line, but only had two field goals to show for it. Thomas Latouf is good in the fourth quarter, and the Demons trailed it 14 to 13. Meantime, the Demon defense remained awesome as ever. Ray Ray Brown coming straight up the middle for the sack. But in the final five and a half minutes, the Trojans move the ball. They put together a 12-play, 68-yard drive to run out the clock, and the Demons are shocked as they fall to Troy State 14-13. to With one loss in the conference, the Demons could ill afford another. In essence, the team entered a playoff atmosphere, facing a must-win situation each week if they wanted to win the Southland title. With that in mind, it was off to Jacksonville State, where the team would post one of its most incredible offensive explosions in school history. In the first quarter, the Demons get on the board when the handoff goes to Tony Taylor. He takes it 22 yards in for the touchdown, and the Demons led it 7-0. Jacksonville responds with three unanswered touchdowns. Montressa Kirby to Ronald Bonner for an 81-yard strike and the Demons were trailing 21-7 midway through the second quarter. The Demons cut the lead to seven when Warren Patterson finds T.J. Sutherland for a 47-yard touchdown strike, but on the play, Patterson is injured, and he would be replaced by Demon backup Brad Spangler. Jacksonville led it 28 to 14 with just a few seconds left in the second quarter when Thomas Latouf is good from 32 yards out. The Demons trailed 28-17 at the half. In the third quarter, Tony Taylor scores his second touchdown of the game. As he's in from a yard out, the Demons only trail by three. Two plays after the ensuing kickoff, Jason Miller forces the fumble. It's recovered by Jake Michelle. And the Demons were back in business with great field position. On first and goal from the five, Darren Drago takes the handoff in for the touchdown, and the Demons were back on top, leading it 32 to 28. The Demon defense continues to hold the Gamecocks at bay. Jake Michelle in for one of his two sacks on the day. Michelle's sack forces the Gamecocks to punt, and Jermaine Jones fields it at the 47-yard line and returns it all the way for the touchdown. Late in the third quarter, Brian Jaquette from a yard out takes it in, and the Demons were up 46-36. In the fourth quarter, Tony Taylor from 12 yards out in for the touchdown. Taylor finishes with 230 yards rushing on the night, fifth best in school history, and the Demons score on seven straight possessions as they win it over Jacksonville State, 53-36. to After the Jacksonville State game, there was little doubt the Demons were back on track. The offense was hitting on all cylinders, heading into their final home game against Sam Houston State. And the Demon defense... Well, they were ready to rewrite the school sack record. The Demons needed two sacks to break the school record, and it didn't take them long to get them. Jason Miller with the first one on Sam Houston's first possession. And then on the very next play, the Demon defense comes up big again. To the left side, here is the quarterback cross. He goes back. He's drilled again. That time Matt Slate was the first to get to him. Slate had some help as well. And I believe that's going to give him the single season sack record right there. The NSU offense gets revved up immediately when Brad Spangler hits Chris Pritchett for a 35-yard touchdown, and the Demons led it 7-0. And while the guys up front were taking care of the quarterback sacks, Jermaine Jones was taking care of things in the secondary. He intercepts the pass and returns it 29 yards, setting up the Demons' next score. 
Tony Taylor does the honors from three yards out, and the Demons had a 14-3 lead. The Demon defense holds the Bearcats in check again, and then Jermaine Jones goes to work. Jermaine Jones takes the line drive kickoff, wiggles free at the 40, breaks outside midfield at the 40, one man to beat, gets a block at the 20, the 10, terrific block, he cuts down Jermaine Jones. In the second quarter, it's Spangler going to the air again, this time to Eric Granger, a 36-yard touchdown, and the Demons led it 28-3 at the half. In the third quarter, it's bombs away again. Brad Spangler to Nathan Black, 56 yards on the touchdown. Spangler finishes with 326 yards passing on the day. The Demons get the ball right back when four-year scout team veteran Chris Williams, seeing his first ever action, forces the fumble on the kickoff and the Demons take over. The Demons led it 38-3 when Tony Taylor gets them more. Burst through a couple of defenders. Stumbles as he's hit at the 35. Reverses field at the 20. Bounces off his own blocker at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Tony Taylor. Touchdown, Northwestern. Just a few minutes later, Brian Jaquette gives the Demons more when he's in from four yards out. NSU up 52-3. And then in the fourth quarter, Darvell Bivens gets into the act. He takes the carry 49 yards for the touchdown. The Demons win it 59 to three. The race for the Southland Conference title came down to the last week of the regular season. The Demons were off to Nacogdoches, Texas to take on Stephen F. Austin in the battle for Chief Caddo and oh, so much more. With the Lumberjacks nearing the red zone on their opening possession, Kenny Wright comes up huge. He picks off the pass and returns it 84 yards. It was the first of four interceptions on the day for the Demons. Darren Drago then takes it in from a yard out, and the Demons were on top 7-0. Once again, the Lumberjacks move it down into scoring territory, but once again, NSU comes up big defensively. This time, B.J. Williams on the interception. After the turnover, the Demons march it down, and Brian Jaquette puts it into the end zone from four yards out. NSU led it 14 to nothing. Then time for some more purple swarm. Matt Slate on the quarterback sack. Midway through the second quarter, the Demons strike again. Brian Jaquette from two yards out. NSU on top, 21 to nothing. Things continue to go well near the goal line as Brad Spangler takes it in for the touchdown. The Demons were up 28 to nothing. Meantime, the Lumberjacks continue to falter. This time it's Michael Green coming up with the turnover as he picks off the pass. But Stephen F. Austin manages to score on the last play of the half, and the momentum had clearly shifted in this one. The Lumberjacks scored twice in the second half and had cut a 28-point Demon lead down to a 7-point margin. With the Lumberjacks going for the tying score, Jermaine Jones once again comes up huge. With two minutes left in the game, the Demons go to the arm of Brian Jaquette. That's right, the arm. Nathan Black reels it in and takes it near the goal line. Brad Spangler then slips in from a yard out, and the Demons win it 35-21 over Stephen F. Austin, NSU claiming its second straight Southland title and the celebration begins.
we've been in this league since 1987. Mm. Nobody has won back-to-back -back championships in that whole time. Just us. Done something special, but you knew you were special. And you've been special all year. They're having the uh, announcement, the uh, selection of the 16 teams and where they're going to play and where they're seated. And guys, we're going to be high. Okay. Yeah! As the outright Southland Conference champion, the Demons secured an automatic bid in the 1AA playoffs. The team gathered to find out who stood in between them and the national championship game in Chattanooga. As the Demons gathered around the TV set, it soon became clear they would be the number two seed and enjoy home field advantage throughout the playoffs. <laughs> Their opening round assignment, the Illinois State Redbirds. With the home field advantage wrapped up through the semifinals, the Demons began their playoff assault. Illinois State came a-calling in the first round, and the Redbirds hardly knew what hit them. For the first time in a long time, a healthy Ronnie Powell was back in the lineup, and he showed it on the Demons' first possession. And then it was Tony Taylor's turn. The Redbirds threaten in the first quarter, but Kenny Wright is there for the Demons. Still in the first quarter, Brad Spangler back to pass. He'll hit Chris Pritchett for a 35-yard touchdown. These two roommates would hook up several times on this day. On the Demons' next possession, it's Spangler to Pritchett again. This time, 60 yards for the touchdown. On the day, Pritchett would have six grabs, 192 yards, and three touchdowns. Leading 21-7 at the half, Brad Spangler adds to his impressive stats, hitting T.J. Sutherland. On the day, Spangler has 344 yards passing. Brian Jaquette then takes it in for the touchdown, and the Demons were up 28-7. Illinois State answers with a touchdown. The Demons facing fourth and one when Brian Jaquette takes the direct snap, and he busts this one loose. 46 yards for the touchdown. Jaquette would be the Demons' leading rusher on the day. And the big plays just keep on coming. Spangler play action. He sets. He heaves it deep. Intended for Sutherland. It is caught on the run of the trail. Sutherland steps in. Touchdown! Brad Spangler for T.J. Sutherland. Too smooth. The Redbirds driving, but the Demon defense once again stops them. It's B.J. Williams on the deflection with the interception. Then Spangler and Pritchett hook up once again, this time from 53 yards out. And NSU wins it 48 to 28 over Illinois State to advance to the quarterfinals. Chris Pritchett from his roommate, Rand Spangler. In the second round, the Demons lined up against Appalachian State, the second place team out of the tough Southern Conference. It was a festive day here in Natchitoches as the annual Christmas parade rolled through town. And for the first time in a long time, the Demons found themselves having to come from behind. The Mountaineers already led it three to nothing in the second quarter when they get more, scoring on this 27 yard touchdown pass and the Demons trailed it by 10. But the big play Demon offense was capable of coming back in a hurry. He fires it deep. On the Demons' next possession, Spangler and Granger hook up again. This time, 77 yards for the touchdown. And the Demons, who trailed by 10, now enjoyed a four-point lead. On the day, Granger 135 yards receiving and two touchdowns. In the second half, the Mountaineers had taken a three-point lead when Brad Spangler is in from two yards out, and NSU had regained the lead 21-17. 
The Mountaineer field goal cut the Demons' lead to one, and in the fourth quarter, NSU mounts a scoring drive. Brad Spangler to Gant Grimmy on for an important first down. And then on the next play, Ronnie Powell takes the handoff and nearly busts it. A 35-yard gain, and the Demons were knocking on the door. Two plays later, Brad Spangler on the quarterback keeper. He's in for the touchdown, and the Demons led it 28 to 20. With three minutes left in the ball game, Thomas Latouf comes on to attempt the 32-yard field goal. It's good, and the Demons were on top, 31 to 20. The Mountaineers were running out of chances, and the Demon defense saw to that. Robert Daniel on the sack. Two plays later, it's Daniel again coming from the blind side, and Mike Green tips the pass away. When the dust had settled, the NSU Demons advanced to the semifinals, winning it over Appalachian State 31-20. The win over Appalachian State set up a showdown with UMass in the 1AA semifinals. The 11 seeded Minutemen had upset McNeese in the opening round and beat undefeated Lehigh in the quarterfinals. The Demons were looking to record their first ever 12-win season, but more importantly, try to earn a trip to the national championship game in Chattanooga, Tennessee. UMass led it 7-0 in the first quarter when Robert Daniel busts in for the quarterback sack. He would have three tackles for lost yardage on the day. Near the end of the first quarter, the NSU offense begins to drive. Brad Spangler to Eric Granger for a first down. Then to start the second quarter, the handoff goes to Ronnie Powell. He takes it 20 yards in for the touchdown to tie the game up at seven apiece. UMass then tries to go to the air, but Kenny Wright is there for Northwestern and makes his first of two interceptions on the day. The Demons turn the turnover into points when Brad Spangler hits Eric Granger for a 31-yard touchdown, and the Demons had their first lead of the day, 14-7. After a UMass touchdown, the Demons go to the air again. Fires. It is. Caught on the run at the 25. Sutherland's got it. Sutherland stumbles across the 10. He's out of bounds at the 7 yard line. First and goal. Kirk Western. On fourth and goal from the one, Brian Jaquette takes the direct snap and takes it into the end zone, and the Demons were back on top 21 to 14. With the game tied at 21 in the third quarter and UMass driving again, the Demon defense comes up big. Kenny Wright making his second interception of the game. He returns it to the 45-yard line, and the Demons were back in business. The Demons managed to only get a field goal out of it, though. Thomas Latouf, good from 29 yards, NSU up 24-21. But the lead evaporates in the fourth quarter when Todd Bankhead hits Matt Jordan for a 49-yard touchdown, and the Demons were trailing by three. The Minutemen score two unanswered touchdowns, but NSU doesn't give up. Bangler retreats. He lets it fly for the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Nathan Black, I believe. UMass wins at 41 to 31. The Demons end out a great season at 11 and 3. While the team fell short of the national title game, the 98 Demons created some memories that'll live forever in the hearts of Demon fans and in the school record books. Here's a look back at some of the faces that made the 98 Demons a team to remember. <laughs> 